Hey guys, so today we're going to go through uh, sort of the basics of a 3D camera and how to set that up with some layers and talk about the different settings that it has. Um, and then we're also going to go through this Mother's Day project that I created where I took some old uh, vintage floral art and I uh, separated that in some Photoshop layers and then added those back into After Effects and moved those around a little bit to give it a little more life and interest. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I have After Effects open and we're just gonna click on New Composition. And so in this first part of the tutorial, we're just gonna go through setting up that basic camera. So I'm gonna make my uh, basic uh, screen 1920 by 1080. And everything looks good here. Frame rate 24 frames a second is good. And we'll just keep with a minute and all that's good. So we hit OK. And it's gonna bring us a new little comp over here. And we have a, a blank canvas to work with. So um, the first thing I wanna do is just make a layer of some sort. So let me drag in maybe a couple of images that we can play with. So I'm gonna come over here to my project manager window and hit command I to import something. All right, so we'll just play with some of these flat layers of these uh, flowers and uh, go from there. So I'm just gonna click on, let's do maybe uh, this flower here. All right, so now I have my flower and we'll talk about how to cut all that out and stuff in, in Photoshop later, but this is just a basic flat PNG. So I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna drag it down and drop it on this little composition button. And that's gonna make a new composition with um, the same size as that PNG so I know that I'm not really losing any quality or anything and it's, and it's all here and if I needed to go back and make some changes um, it's pretty easy to do that so this is looking good we can zoom in and, and maybe change my um, resolution here to something nice and full so you can see it's got a really uh, good quality to it okay so I'm gonna go back to my comp one and actually let's drag in maybe one more layer that's just like a, a background texture all right so I'm gonna hit uh, command I again and I'm just gonna find maybe some sort of paper texture all right, so I have a pretty basic paper texture. And again, I'm gonna drag this into a composition as well. And I'll talk about uh, later why I do that, why I put it into its own composition. All right, so back to my main comp one. And now we can drag in those compositions that we made. So I can re rename this paper. And I'm just hitting enter to uh, rename those. And flower. All right, so let's drag in our paper down here. I'm just gonna drop it in here. And there we go. And I can maybe scale it down, change my resolution so I can see the actual quality and there we go so that's close enough it's about half resolution all right so then I'm gonna drag in my flower layer and drop it in here and it's massive so I'm gonna scale that down a little bit by hitting S on the keyboard and scale this down okay now one thing I'm gonna do to extend this background is uh, give it a motion tile uh, effect so that it sort of um, duplicates the the entire layer um, on the, the height and the width so I'm gonna click on paper I'm gonna go to a layer uh, effect and uh, stylize I believe and then motion tile and then I can uh, change my output width and height to something more so I'm gonna go like 300 by 300 all right so it duplicates that and so you can see sort of the edges here but if you click on mirror edges um, it should make it look fairly seamless it's not perfect um, but um, for this example, it, it's pretty good. So the next step is gonna be making our uh, layers here 3D. So the way to do that is you click on these little, um, this where this little cube is down here, you click on these little buttons and make, add the little 3D cube to these layers. And if you don't see that 3D cube, you can probably click on this toggle switches and modes button down here, uh, and it'll give you uh, those options. So once you click that, it is now a 3D layer. Now, if I had more than one layer inside of uh, my flower layer, for instance, then I would probably go actually into this composition and make this uh, all the different layers in here 3D as well. And uh, we'll talk about that in a bit when we talk about the Mother's Day project. But, um, you know, I would go in here and make a bunch of la layers uh, 3D as well. But for now, since it's just one layer, it doesn't uh, really matter. So uh, this is all good. We'll go back to comp one. And now we both have layers that are 3D. And what that means is that now I can um, not only move this left and right, but I can, or I can not only rotate it left and right, um, I can rotate it uh, in Z space and, and Y and move it back and forth. So uh, if I hit uh, W on the keyboard, that gives me my rotate tool. I can drag my cursor right on top of um, this new um, axis that they have in the newer version of After Effects. And it gives me that circle right around the um, green arrow. And it says it has a little Y there on my cursor. And that means I'm rotating on the Y axis. So I can click and drag and you can see it rotating there. So I can go, um, obviously it's a flat image, but now you can see I can rotate in those in that space. Okay. And so it's cutting off because it's directly on top of that piece of paper. But if I move it um, towards me or push the paper back, then I'll have some space. So for instance, if I click on my flower, which it is, I'm gonna hit uh, V on the keyboard for my pointer tool. 
and I'm gonna drag my cursor right on top of the um, arrow here that's Z that's pointing right at me and once that turns to Z I can click and drag and now I'm dragging that towards me and away from the paper and to better see this I'm gonna go to the active camera actually let's see yeah active camera and we go down to custom view one so now we're sort of um, almost like we're up in some balcony seating or something looking down at a stage and so now if I again move that put my cursor right on top of that Z arrow and drag it you can see I'm moving it far away from that piece of paper okay and so now if I put my cursor on the Y axis again and rotate I'm pretty much off of it I still am a little bit too close there for it to fully rotate all right so I'm gonna go back to my main active camera there we go okay all right so where does the camera part come into play um, and that's where we're going to be able to um, change sort of what our, our lens looks like. We'll talk about that in a bit, um, as well as add some depth of field, uh, move the camera around, uh, and get some nice cool camera effects. So the next thing I'm going to do is go up to the layer menu and go to new and camera. And here we give some options here. Um, pretty much whatever it's set on is probably fine. Um, I would maybe change mine to like a 35 or 50. That's pretty standard. Um, if you're, you know, if you're doing something super close up and maybe want a lot of um, depth, you may want to go um, towards 35 or 50. Um, but if you're doing a, a big wide shot, then you know, 15 to 20 millimeter may be where you're, you're going to get that. It's going to really, really uh, make small images look big. Um, but if you're looking for like more of an intimate type of setup, then maybe somewhere around in here would be good. So we'll just go with, uh, let's just go with 50. All right, we'll keep all this um, the same. We can turn all this stuff on later and mess with this uh, in the camera settings on the uh, and once it's in the layer. So I'm gonna hit OK, and now we're good to go. And the next thing I'm gonna do now, you can uh, animate this camera through some settings here by toggling this down and going to the transform and doing them here. You know, you you can do that for some reason. I've always done where I attach it to a null object. Um, and then animate that null object. And maybe that's just because I'm an, I'm an old uh, video copilot um, student, but uh, that's just kind of what I've always been known to do. So I'm gonna go up to uh, layer and I'm gonna new and null object. And null object is basically just a, a fake layer um, inside, of your, inside of your scene. So it doesn't show up really as anything, um, but it's there sort of a, a controller. So we're just gonna rename this um, movement, okay? And so in order for the camera to do exactly what the null object does, we need to attach the camera to that null object. And the way to do that is by using this little uh, swirly um, icon here. And again, if you don't see that, click on this button. But I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna drag it up and just let it go on the movement layer. And so now you can see right here, it is parented to that movement. Problem is, it's not going to do anything unless this movement layer is a 3D layer. So we wanna turn that on as a 3D layer. So now if I move the movement layer, hopefully all of this stuff here will move as well. So I'm gonna put my cursor right on top of the, um, again, that Z uh, axis, and I'm gonna click and drag and move it. So the flower and the background aren't moving, but the camera is moving towards it. So think of this as like on a dolly, and I'm dollying towards um, the flower, okay? So you can see a little bit, there's a little bit of a, a parallax shift in the background and uh, the flower, okay? So before we get into anything too crazy, let's just talk about how to make some simple animations with this, um, sort of let it let the camera move by itself. All right, so let's just go maybe from, from top to bottom. So I'm gonna move my camera, um, again, with this movement uh, layer, I'm gonna click on the Y axis, I'm gonna move it um, up here, way up. Click and drag again, maybe somewhere around in here, okay? So in order to set a keyframe, I'm going to do it on the movement's uh, position parameter. So I'm gonna click on this little, drop down here to transform, and I'm gonna click on position. And I typically like to go ahead and click on orientation as well, just in case I decide to do any sort of rotation at the same time. And so if I hit U on the keyboard with that layer selected, it'll show me just those two keyframes that I've, uh, I've made. All right, so I'm gonna move maybe over to six seconds, and then I'm going to um, click that Y axis again and drag it down to my next position. Okay, so somewhere right around in here. All right, and so now you can see it automatically set a keyframe right there um, on my position uh, parameter. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead, even though I didn't move any orientation settings, I'm gonna just go ahead and click on that keyframe as well just to go ahead and set that and lock that in. All right, so now if I hit spacebar, it should play that little scene, and there is the movement. 
All right, so the movement's pretty robotic. It doesn't really do, doesn't really have much of uh, emotion to it. So um, the coolest trick to do is just add some uh, tweaks to the graph editor and the speed. So the way to do that, I'm just gonna highlight both of these keyframes. And I'm gonna click on this little graph button here. That's gonna bring up my graph editor. You can see that it's super uh, straight and um, you know, just very uh, linear. So actually, let me go back here. I'm gonna highlight these and I'm gonna right click on one of those keyframes. I'm gonna go down to uh, Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease. All right, and so now if I click on that, it's gonna sort of start slow and then it's gonna move a little quicker and then it's gonna come to a, a little slow stop. But we can make that a bit better. So I'm gonna highlight those and I'm gonna go to that um, graph editor there. And mine is set to the speed graph. And if yours doesn't quite look like this, you can change your settings here, I believe. And I'll do the uh, speed graph here. And so uh, to change this, I'm gonna click and drag those uh, last two points there. And then I'm going to, it gives me this little yellow handle. I'm gonna click on that yellow handle. I'm gonna drag it to the left. And so basically this is saying we're gonna start slow, go really fast, and then slowly come to a stop. So we can hit spacebar to play that back. So now that middle speed is a lot faster than it originally was. Okay, so I can even uh, click and highlight the left uh, keyframes and pull that all the way to the left. Maybe even make that even tighter just to show you exactly what's going on. So it's going real fast and come to a, a really slow stop. Okay, so that's sort of what this does is to um, change how the camera really moves, but we'll, we'll back that up just a little bit. All right, so now we have our camera movement. Uh, you can tell that the paper is off of the uh, actual flyer, stop flower, so you have a little bit of um, some, some depth there. All right, so now let's uh, change this up and add a little bit more of uh, some rotation and something in this to make it a bit more um, interesting. So I'm gonna click and delete these keyframes. And now let's maybe zoom, maybe what we'll do is we'll zoom in as our initial start and then we will uh, and have the camera uh, back out. So I'm going to um, go and drag my mouse right on top of that Z axis. I'm gonna pull it all the way into the flower. Maybe something like this. Actually, you know what? Let's undo that. And let me set my keyframes back here again right where they were. And now I'm, this is where my final stop will be. I'm gonna zoom in, we'll put my playhead back at the beginning and I'm gonna pick my cursor right on top of that Z and push it into the flower, okay? And I'm actually gonna lock in that orientation as well. So if I play that back, the camera's just sliding back like that, okay? So, but now let's pull all the way in here and now let's add some rotation. So this is where it can start getting a little bit tricky with moving the camera around. Rotation can um, sometimes really throw you off, um, but we'll just have to take it kind of slow and see what we can do. So I'm just gonna do pretty much one axis at a time. And so now if I click and drag and start rotating, you can see that I'm getting like really wonky and it's just not really doing exactly what we wanted to do. So I'm actually gonna zoom out with my mouse um, ball and kind of roll it out a little bit. And now if I rotate, you can sort of see what's happening here. Okay, and so this is good. We can maybe rotate like this. And then I'm going to take my cursor and put it maybe on the X axis and slide it back. And so I'm just gonna line up that that shot. All right, so now we're sort of at an angle with that flower and let's play this back and see what happens. All right, so you can see it sort of slowly did a, a rotation there. All right, and we can maybe speed that up again. All right, so highlight those and I'm gonna right click e, uh, keyframe assistant and easy ease and go to that graph editor again and tighten up these. Oops, something like that. All right, so now let's throw in another layer and we're just gonna take this flower and we're going to uh, duplicate it. So I'm gonna click on the flower layer and I'm gonna hit Command D and it's gonna duplicate that layer. And now I can move this in 3D space. Uh, let's go back to that active camera and custom view. And so we can see right here, we have this is our little, this little box here is our camera. If I click on that, you can see it's kind of pointing at the flower. And now we have another flower layer right on top of this one. And now we can move this layer maybe back a bit. So I'm going to, actually I'm gonna move this one down here cause it's on the bottom. That just helps me sort of think about where these layers are in 3D space. Now I can move this back here and it's right through the paper there. So we'll maybe go right here. And now I'm going to uh, maybe move this over a little bit and let's go back to my main view. We can position this where we want. So now I'm selected on that flower so I can click and drag and maybe move this around a bit. So let's maybe throw it right here. All right. 
and this quality is holding up pretty good. So if I go to full quality, this is a super high res image and it's, it's hanging on, hanging in there pretty good. So um, we can go back to half for now. And so this one is um, off the flower in 3D space. And if I hit space bar, now it's got even a little bit more depth and it's starting to feel a bit more lifelike. Very cool. Okay, so um, the next step would be, let's talk about some, maybe some depth of field and how to give this even more uh, realism. So uh, let's, let's add one more layer. So I'm gonna take my flower, actually I'll take this top flower and I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm going to drag this towards the camera. So let's go back to that custom view here and I'm gonna drag it out this way. And I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna move this. And I want to get this pretty close to the camera. So I'm gonna drag it pretty close like up here. Okay, throw some maybe up here in the top corner so we just get some of those leaves in there. Maybe something like that. All right, so it feels like we're just in this massive garden, right? All right, so how do we make this feel a little bit more realistic? Maybe I'll take this flower here and we will right click and I'm gonna go to transform and flip that horizontally so it's at least facing the other way. So it looks not quite like a duplicate. All right, cool. So in order to do depth of field, what we wanna do is go into our camera settings and I'm gonna to toggle this down to camera options. And we have a few options here, zoom, depth of field, focus distance, aperture, blur level, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I typically don't really mess with much of this down here, um, but I will mess with the um, depth of field and the focus distance and aperture, mainly these, these four here. So in order to turn it on, we will turn it on here and it's probably gonna get a little blurry. So you can see when I did that, this up here is a little bit blurry and this back here is just a touch blurry. All right, so the next thing we wanna check is our focus distance. And for me, the easiest way to do that is to go to this active camera and I'm gonna to go to the left um, view. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And so when I click on my camera and I start playing with the focus distance, I can just click and drag this back and forth. You can see the uh, focus distance there is moving right there. So. Um, we have our big flower up here with those leaves. We have our um, paper layer here, I believe, and then the two flowers there. So I'm gonna pull this focus distance all the way back to our main flower that we're focused on, all right? And now remember, the camera is moving, so if the camera moves, that focus distance is gonna move, all right? Just like that. So right here, it's gonna be very out of focus, and then right here, it's gonna be in focus. So if you want it to be in focus the whole time, you would need to uh, set that keyframe. So for instance, I would want to set a keyframe for the focus distance there. And also for, I would wanna maybe pull it all the way back, way back here. And then make sure these uh, keyframes, uh, make sure the speed is sort of matching that as well. So you maybe wanna highlight that, do an easy ease, and then make sure it sort of has the same path as these. So you can see that the focus distance is not gonna change exactly like the speed is. But what I'm gonna do is not worry about that right now. That's getting, gonna get a little bit advanced, so we're gonna come back to that later. We have our focus distance set at six seconds, so we're basically gonna come into focus, and we go back to my active camera. And now, it doesn't really seem like maybe we want some, we want some more um, depth here. And the way I would do that is changing the aperture. Um, so in a camera, you know, aperture is, is sort of that iris closing in and out and allowing a bunch of different light to come in. Um, but we're going to adjust this number. So basically the higher the number you put here, um, the shallower the depth of field is gonna be, which means it's gonna have a lot, you know, it's really gonna focus on one plane in space. Um, but if you have a, a super low number here, it's gonna kind of pull everything into focus for the most part. Um, so I'm going to bump this number up to like, I don't know, 125. And so now these got uh, really blurry here uh, and these are still not quite um, out of focus. And that's because these are, these are pretty close to this layer. So what we could do is maybe even push our flower in the background and our paper layer back a good bit. And so now you can see as that layer is getting farther away from our main flower, it's getting a lot blurrier. Okay, so we do something like that. I could even take that flower and bump up the scale by hitting S on the keyboard. Scale it up like that. Move it around. Okay, cool. So now this feels a little bit more like a realistic camera 
And if I hit spacebar and play that, so that one was in focus and now it's sort of out of focus and that one's coming into focus. All right, so that's uh, a, a really the main basics of the camera. So I'm gonna go back to these camera options. I mean, again, you can change these numbers. You can even turn the blur level down a good bit, um, crank it up a whole ton, um, but we're gonna leave it you know, somewhere on a normal setting. Um, but that's really, as far as our camera goes, the, the very basics of, of getting that camera to move, um, setting it to a null object. Um, you can then go into that movement, hit you on the keyboard, and now maybe I could go from, from you know, this point and then slide over to maybe this direction here and have some text right there or something like that. Good, I'm gonna lock that um, rotation down. And so if I hit play, it's gonna move out here like that. Takes a little bit to render and then it's gonna slowly come to a stop and then slide over this way. Now, another thing you can do with the graph editor is um, adjust that that pause there and now one thing also before i jump into that is with um, after effects cameras sometimes it tends to default to um, sort of an interpolation between the movements and it can get super frustrating so sometimes this will be set to what they call continuously uh, uh, or continuous bezier i think or something like that and so what it does is sort of tries to compensate based on your movement so you may have your camera doing something that you did not ask it to do, sort of flying maybe way out coming back in or overshooting your you know your angle or something like that. And in order to fix that, you can highlight all of this, right click, go to uh, keyframe interpolation. And I've already set mine to linear, but this may be, you know, it's a, yeah, set on like auto bezier or something. So if I hit play, let me change my quality here. You can see sort of it, it overshot a little bit and then came back. So it's subtle, and so if you're doing a lot of camera movements, you may notice it trying to trying to um, force its way into a certain movement that you didn't ask for. And in order to fix that, right click, change that back to linear. Okay. Um, so another thing too, as far as these movement goes, if you don't want it to come to a complete stop, I'm going to highlight all of these again and go to my graph editor. And now you can see it. You know, goes fast, slows down completely, and then goes fast and slows down completely. I'm going to zoom in with the plus key. And so now I could take these points here, and I think I just want to move my positions here. And, I'm, and I just clicked on position in order to move those by itself. So I keep those kind of lined up right there. And so now as it moves, it will um, not come to a complete stop. So it floats there for just a second and then moves over. So that's sort of the gist of it. Now, for me, I don't like doing a long scene with a, um, a lot of camera movements just because it just the liability starts increasing uh, if things start getting kind of wonky and it uh, can be hard to fix, especially if, if you're doing a project for a client or something and the, uh, they want to change the timing, then you got to change the timing for the entire thing. So I try to break it up into you know, scenes that will cut. Um, to a whole other composition that we have pieced together in another scene makes it a lot easier um, in the in the long run All right, so let's do one more quick example of uh, Adding uh, a 3d camera real quickly into a scene. Uh, so right now I have this uh, really lame Temporary logo that is just made and threw in here from app from uh, illustrator We'll talk about how to make this little animation uh, in a second um, But again, it's it's nothing fancy. It's just a little star and a circle, but um, how to maybe do a camera movement with this logo animation um, So uh, what I have again is that paper with that motion tile on it that we've already gotten um, I've um, Desaturated it a little bit to give it more of a white look um, And then I added that star logo and it's in its own composition, which is right here um, and we'll talk about how to do this in a minute. But um, again, these are all in the same plane, so these aren't, uh, I guess I'll make them 3D. So now these are 3D layers, but they're also on the same plane. And I wanna keep them like that because I want it almost to look like it's on the paper. Um, so again, we'll just do a quick review. We're gonna go up to composition, actually we're gonna go to layer, sorry, new and uh, camera. And we'll keep it at all of this is the same. We'll go ahead and enable depth of field right there and hit okay, all right. And so now we'll go to layer again, and I'm gonna make a null object, and we'll name, we'll name this uh, movement, and we'll connect the camera to the movement, again with that pick whip tool, click and drag to get that blue line, and we'll uh, attach it right here to the movement layer. All right, and we need to also make our movement layer 3D as well. 
All right, so now let's try something a little different where we will uh, add a couple of cameras in here um, to maybe change the scenes, almost like you're building a little movie. So um, what we'll do is we'll do a couple close-up shots of this little uh, star thing animating, and then we'll do maybe a wide shot of it sort of uh, slowly moving out. So let's go ahead and set that slowly moving out camera since we know how to do that. I'm going to um, set some keyframes here. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard. I'm gonna lock in that movement and I'm going to uh, also hit R to lock in that orientation. Okay, and we'll move maybe forward this way a little bit. And I'm going to take my cursor right on top of that Z axis, I'm gonna push in here. So my sl my last camera movement is gonna be the super slow. And again, I'm gonna right click, add that easy ease in here. Make that really come to a slow stop. And this is what we've already covered with that um, graph editor, okay. So that movement is going to do a little push out right there. Very subtle, nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, so this will be sort of my, my last camera shot. Um, so think of this as like a setup during some sort of um, video shoot. All right, so I'm going to make these layers, just keep them all the same length, all right? I'm also gonna change the color of these so I can keep, them tr keep track of them. So we'll just make this orange. All right, so this will be, you know, shot three. And this can be uh, shot three movement. All right. We'll just maybe move this down here a little bit. And so what we're going to do now is duplicate this. So I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate, and it duplicates my camera and my um, null object. I'm going to click and drag, and we'll put this maybe down here. So now I can move this over here. All right. So we'll make this maybe shot two, and let's go ahead and duplicate it again. And I'm gonna drag this down here, and this is gonna be shot one. Okay, so now you have basically three camera setups. We have this one, this one, this one, and we want to adjust our first one here. So the uh, first two are gonna be nice and tight on this logo, and um, maybe we'll add some depth of field to it. So I'm gonna go back into my uh, movement here. I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard, and I really just wanna delete these for now. I don't want these anymore. We're gonna make some new ones. All right, so for this one, we're gonna push way in. So I'm gonna click on that shot three, uh, movement actually actually shot one, but we'll, we can rename those later. So I'm gonna push way in here, way in. I'm gonna rotate it. And again, you may want to zoom out so we can see what's going on. Let's rotate it even more. Let's go crazy with it. All right, I'm gonna push way into it here. You maybe rotate it on a different axis here. Do something like that. All right, so now I think what we can do is with this camera, I'm gonna add that depth of field. So I'm gonna to toggle this down, make sure my depth of field here is on. All right, and so now it's super blurry, so I'm gonna change my focus distance. And if you, um, you can click and drag these numbers, but you can also go to that active camera and go to, you know, like left. So again, we're really angled here. And I'm gonna push in, actually I'm pull back this depth of field, okay? So this is my main layer, and that's my depth of field there. Go back to active camera. And so now you can see, this is sort of out of focus, this is sort of out of focus, and it's getting in focus there. And we can change that again by bumping up that aperture to really get a shallow depth of field, okay? So our first movement can be, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and R. Lock in those points there. I'm gonna move forward. And we'll just do some subtle movements here. I'm gonna maybe um, push way in, maybe up here like this, so we can focus on that first little animation there. Lock in that orientation as well. And we'll move this over here. And let's see what that looks like. All right. All right, so you can see as it's uh, playing here, we're on our first camera, and then right here it's gonna cut to that next camera, okay? And so what we really want is we want another camera set up just like uh, the one we just had. So this one's already sort of in position. So I'm gonna just highlight this and delete that one. And I'm gonna duplicate this one. So Command D to duplicate, drag those up to where they're together. And I can actually change the color of this to be something different. Keep track of all my camera setups here. All right, and so I'm gonna highlight these, hit U on the keyboard so I can see my um, keyframes and I want this camera to start right where this one leaves off so this one left off right here 
So I want to drag this maybe right around in here. Okay, so right at two seconds is going to cut to this other camera. And this is where we don't need these anymore. We're going to rearrange this a little bit. So maybe we'll just adjust our orientation. Let's see. I basically want to be on the other side of it. Maybe we could do some sort of thing like this. I'll lock those in somewhere around in there. Move those right under our next camera shot. Go to the beginning of my layer and we'll set maybe do some sort of whoa. Okay, gotta definitely fine tune this because if you're super close up to something, your camera is going to be all over the place. Maybe something like this. Let's try that. All right, so let's play this back and see what happens. All right, so nothing too crazy, but you get the idea. Movement, movement, boom. Uh, that was sort of quick, but again, uh, again, I made I made basically the same setup that we had in the flower thing with the. Um, null object in the camera and then I basically duplicated that and so it's cutting from one camera to the next camera to the next camera. You can see all the cameras sort of right there as well. A couple of things to note um, if you're doing something like this super close up, let me go to my full view, is you're going to want some pretty high res um, images here. I want to make sure that this paper texture is as small as it can be. So, um, you know, I have the paper texture here and I did that. Uh, motion tile option to it so I'm going to scale that back and so now if I zoom in the paper quality should get a little bit better the farther I go in you can see there it's sort of off and you can bump up that motion tile a good bit but it may give you an error the, the higher you get because it can't quite comp uh, can't quite read all those pixels and you could obviously go in and change the paper texture each time as well uh, to something a little bit closer and that when you cut to the wide, you're not having all these random wrinkles and stuff. Before we move on real quick, let's talk quickly about that star logo. So the only thing I did there is I made this an illustrator. Um, the biggest uh, thing to do when you're making like line art and, and um, things like this to animate is that you just wanna make sure that you keep it as a path and you can tell it's a path because I'm sort of, I have my, my lines here. Now if this was um, filled in, it would be somewhat like this here and it would have you know the outlines here and this is nearly uh, it's basically impossible to animate inside of after effects as far as i know um, so it's much easier if you have a path to follow same thing with my circle is it's a path here and so um, if you can keep your shapes like that then great um, otherwise you may need to trace them manually and it's not very fun but um, keep them like that save them as an eps or illustrator file and all i did was import that as an uh, eps file here i dropped that into here it's very, very small. You can see it sort of faint right there. And the main next step you wanna do is right click and go to create uh, shapes from vector layer. And that's gonna give you this outlines layer. And then from here, you can scale this up to any size you want and you won't lose any quality because it's now a shape layer inside of After Effects. From here, I just toggle this down, go to add, trim paths, and you can set your settings here. So I want it to maybe end right here. So I'm gonna hit that little stopwatch, move over here, and I'm going to drag this all the way down to zero and hit play. And it sketches that out. And again, you can add a, a graph editor, easy ease to that and make it a little bit smoother. Also change your um, end settings to, I believe it's under stroke. I think it's maybe group two here. Stroke settings and from butt cap to round cap. And it'll add that little roundest, rounded edges to your uh, to your stroke. All right, so moving on, let's go back to the uh, flower animation and talk about how to uh, create that um, really nice parallax version of the flower. So let's go back to this folder. I have all of these um, flower images that I've downloaded. Um, and so the first thing I want to do is open them up in Photoshop. So we're gonna talk about this hydrangea one here. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to open with Photoshop. 
So it's important to open it like that in Photoshop because you don't want to drag in a super high res version into you know, a 1920 by 1080 canvas um, because it's sort of limiting you to that size um, for the most part. So this way you're really keeping your resolution um, as best as you can. So what I'm going to do now is just duplicate this command J to duplicate. And I'll go through this a bit quick as this isn't really what the tutorial is about as there's a lot of stuff out there as far as cutting out um, images. But uh, what I'm going to do is uh, with this one, it's really easy to probably select just this white color and delete it and then maybe we can clean it up a little bit. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to select and go to color range. Now this probably wouldn't really work very well if you had a lot of uh, white in your main image and this even may cause some problems but let's, let's try it out and see. So I'm going to click on color range and I'm going to take my color picker and click on that white. And that's pretty much it. Now if you have maybe a some different shades of white you can hold down shift and sort of click around and get make sure you pull in all those colors but right now it's it's recognizing the inside of some of these flowers is white so i'm making adjust this fuzziness here to uh, get what i want but this one see this one's not that great of an example because i can't quite isolate that white exactly so let's try a different way i'm going to cancel this out now this would be a great if i had a flower that didn't have as much white in it let's say this yellow one here let me open this one up. So if I had this one, it doesn't have as much white in it. So let's try select color range and color pick that. And so now you can see it's it's pretty much, and I want to go right to the edge to where it doesn't see any of that flower. Somewhere right around in there is pretty good. Hit OK. And now I can uh, hit delete and it'll delete all of that white in the background. So it's pretty good. Now if you get really close, you might see some, some rough edges. Uh, but this one turned out pretty good. It's not, it's not too bad, but it doesn't really work for this hydrangea. So what I'm going to do is uh, just use the good old fashioned color picker. So I'm going to hit W on the keyboard for my magic wand, um, which is what I want. I'm going to adjust my tolerance down pretty low. So maybe like 20 and cause I really, I just need this white. That's, that's close to this. I'm going to click on that and that's pretty good. And I'm going to go down a little bit more. So we'll, I'm getting a little bit too, these, too much of these flowers. So we're going to go down to maybe 10. Let's uh, deselect that, Command D, and that's looking pretty good. Let's go down a little bit more, maybe to seven. Let's deselect this. All right, so there we go. That's looking pretty good. Now you can also hold down Shift and click again somewhere else down where there's other white spots. All right, so I think that covers just about everything. Now I can hit Command, or I can hit Delete to delete that. Now sometimes it will it's a little hard to see. You can't really see, but there may be other specs. This was on a, like a paper texture and I ran into some issues. So uh, to make sure I got everything deleted, I'm going to click on, uh, basically double click my layer and I'm going to hit the stroke button. Yeah. So you can see it's picking up all sorts of little of these little uh, pieces around here. So what I'm going to do now, hit okay. Let's turn that off for now. I'm going to bump up my tolerance to like, maybe like 230 or something. Click this. And now it should just be getting the flower. I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that. And now let's try to turn on that stroke. So now we're just getting the, the flower, which is what we want. Because I did that earlier and I had to go back and remove all those. Uh, but now this is what we want. So we don't need this layer anymore. Let's delete that. And we can turn off our stroke. So a nice clean flower ready to go. Now one step I want to do before I move on is make sure that my edges are looking pretty good. So um, it's really hard to see on this transparent background. So I typically will uh, make a, a background layer of something like black, something super high contrast. Just drag this in here and see what we're working with. See now here, right here, we didn't even notice that we had cut off these flowers and that's not great. So to save time, I'm just going to go into this layer, hit E on the keyboard, and we're just going to maybe take this one out. Now, when I did that, you can see that the eraser gives a pretty nice clean edge on um, our flowers versus doing the, you know, the magic wand tool. You get sort of this rough edge here, um, even maybe some of them up here. So one way, one thing that I usually do to try to fix that a little bit without having to go through and erase every single thing. Let me maybe clean this one up a little bit as well. Something like that is um, is doing a select and mask. So in order to maybe clean these up a little bit is I'm going to hold down uh, command and click on my layer. So it selects um, the entire layer here. And then I'm going to click on I'm hit W on the keyboard and I get this button up here that says select and mask. I'm going to click on that. 
gives me some options over here to where I can maybe smooth up these edges a little bit. And these are uh, should be pretty subtle adjustments. So I'm gonna click on Shift Edge, and I think if I pull it towards me, it should pull those in a little bit. Maybe we'll click on Smooth, a couple of um, pixels there. Don't really want the radius, didn't really help a whole lot. But Smooth um, adds a pretty good bit. And that's a pretty nice looking edge, which I think will do exactly what we wanted to do. Maybe we'll knock it down to two. And so we get a pretty clean edge. And that's that's a good way to uniformly uh, smooth out your edges. And so if you hit OK, then it basically gives a new mask, but um, it is the new mask is on your nice smooth edges. So in order to apply that to your layer, while this is now selected, you basically just need to make a copy of this. So I'm gonna hit Command J, so it copies what's in that mask and I can turn off this layer. And so now I have this nice smooth layer. So this is our smooth layer, and this is our rough layer. It's subtle, but it, uh, it makes a difference whenever you're getting super close up. So this is our smooth layer. We don't need this one anymore. And I'm gonna actually duplicate this one, Command J, to um, keep a nice clean copy. We can turn off our background there. And basically I wanna just cut out all the pieces that I know will be moving around. So for this one, I wanted um, the hydrangea and I wanted maybe the leaf by itself. So I'd go and I'd make some layers. So again, I have this layer here, hit E on the keyboard, and I'm just gonna take out, I'm gonna do this one pretty quick and dirty um, just to kind of give you an idea of what I've got going on. From there, I hit W on the keyboard. I can bump up that tolerance, click on my flower, Command J, and now I have just the flower itself. Now, now this is sort of a trash layer, so I can delete that. And I want to duplicate this one again to some nice clean layer. Turn off that flower head there. And I can now erase and keep maybe just the stem and the leaf. Again, hitting E on the keyboard. And I don't want any of the flowers, so I'm going to, oops, I'm going to erase just where the leaf wouldn't be. Something like that. And we'll erase this flower here. And I know I'm going to be moving these layers in 3D space, so I need to extend some parts. I'm gonna do Command J to now. I have just my stem here. And so I know this is gonna be moving in 3D space, so I'm probably gonna to need to extend the stem just a little bit. So I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard for my clone and stamp tool. And I'm gonna hold down Option, and I can click somewhere on my stem, and now I can extend that stem out just a little bit more. Something like that. Click that, I don't need a lot, just a little bit. But now we also need to fix our leaves here. So um, I'm going to actually hold down uh, command and click that or control and then click that uh, layer so it's selected. And now I can use that um, clone stamp tool, S on the keyboard. I'm probably gonna make it kind of small. So I'm gonna bump that brush size down a bit. And I wanna get rid of these flower petals on here. So I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard, hold down option. I'm gonna click on this dark spot here, get rid of that one. And so now it's just gonna stamp what's in the selection that I've made. All right, so I'm gonna work my way through here. It's not gonna be perfect, um, but hopefully the untrained eye won't really recognize it. Okay, so close enough right there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I'd probably go a little bit further and separate these leaves as well, but for example's sake, we'll keep it as, as is. So I can rename this you know, flower and stem, but I will open up the other one that I actually already did and show you what I have. So when it's all said and done, I have this leaf by itself. I have my main stem. Let me just turn all these off. So I have a leaf, I have the main stem, then I have a big leaf here, as well as the flower head. So that's nice and organized and how I wanna bring it into After Effects. So let's jump over to After Effects, Hit Command I to import. And I'm gonna find that hydrangea right here. Click on the hydrangea. And we wanna make sure we say composition, retain layer sizes, and editable layer styles is good. Hit okay. That's gonna drop it in here. Uh, now I'm sorry if you hear this beeping truck outside. They're doing some construction or something nearby, so try to ignore that. All right, so I'm double click on my hydrangea composition because it makes a nice composition the same size as my Photoshop layer. And now I have all my layers just like I did in Photoshop. So now we can get into where we talked about making these um, move a good bit and uh, maybe adding a little bit more depth to them. 
So the first step I'm gonna do is actually uh, right click down here and go to composition settings and I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna click on lock aspect ratio and just bump this up a little bit just so I have a little more room on the sides to work with. All right, so let's go ahead and we can ignore this one. We're gonna make all of these uh, 3D layers. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, click on toggle switches and modes and make these 3D. All right, so now I wanna uh, move these anchor points to where they would pivot if, they, if the wind was blowing. So uh, I'm gonna go to the flower. This one's probably about accurate, but I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard. It's gonna give me this little anchor point tool and I can move it maybe somewhere around in here. I'm thinking where the stem would meet that flower. So that's good. Same thing with this leaf and this leaf that I'm working with here is this big one. So its pivot point is gonna be right over here. This stem's pivot point will be attached to the ground, so we'll stick it somewhere down here. The leaf number two is probably about accurate, somewhere around in there. What I did was added some simple expressions to make these move around a little bit. So we'll take the flower, and I'm going to add some expressions to the um, rotation uh, parameter. So I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard, and we're gonna do it to the orientation. So in order to access the expression control thing, this is where it's gonna get a little bit advanced, but uh, stick with me, is I'm going to hold down Option, and I'm gonna click on this little stopwatch here, and it's gonna bring up this little box here, and these numbers will turn red. And so from here, I wanna type in the word wiggle, okay? And I'm gonna hit parentheses, or open parentheses, and I'm gonna type in two numbers. So the first number is gonna be the uh, frequency at which it moves, so let's uh, do a pretty small number like 0.5, and I'm gonna hit comma, and now the next number will be sort of like the amount that it moves. I guess maybe this number is referring to degrees or pixels or something like that. So I'm going to make this also sort of a small number. We'll make it two. It's probably gonna to be too much, but we'll we'll see. So I'm gonna click off of that, and now you can see it moved a little bit. So if I hit spacebar, it's gonna randomly, over the course of time, just randomly wiggle it based on these numbers back and forth. So if I um, play that back, you can see it just kind of randomly moving like that, okay? And it's cutting in between these layers because they're all stacked on top of each other in 3D space. Now, if I didn't want these to wiggle um, on all these different um, axes here, then I would probably just put it on, you know, like the Z rotation, uh, so it just wiggles back and forth, kind of like it's waving. But this is gonna be a little bit of everything. All right, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna copy this, Command-C to copy, and we'll do the same thing to pretty much all of these. So um, I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, uh, option click that stopwatch there, and paste this, and we'll change this number just a little bit. We'll go to like one and 0.3, and we're, this is just gonna help it randomize just a little bit, okay? Same thing on the stem, R on the keyboard, option click that stopwatch, paste in a new number, so maybe 0.4, and four, it's gonna get pretty extreme. And same thing with the leaf, R on the keyboard, option click that stopwatch and we'll keep that as the same number. Okay, so the next step, now they're all gonna be crossing each other which uh, is a mess. So let's just highlight all of those and hit U on the keyboard to collapse it. So now we're gonna move this in 3D space a little bit. Um, so. I'm going to go to custom view one, and let's move this around. So we want our flower to pretty much exist on top of everything. And we can maybe push our leaf number one right behind it. Our leaf number two probably wants to be pretty far in the back, and we'll keep our stem right where it is. Okay, let's go back to our active camera, turn our quality down just a bit. All right, so it's looking good. Problem is, uh, everything is sort of floating on its own. So what we need to do is start attaching these just like they would be um, in real life. So we want our flower. Our flower would be attached to the stem. So the flower is going to, I'm gonna pick with this to the stem. And so the flower is gonna move on its own, but it's also gonna move wherever the stem goes. Same thing with the leaves. The leaves will be attached to the stems as well. Okay, there we go. And now if I hit space bar, it's sort of swaying like a real flower. Okay, let's so maybe give a little more time here. Boy, that beeping is really annoying, but hopefully you can't hear it. So now we got this really cool looking flowing flower and it's uh, 
So this is feeling pretty good. So that's that's basically the, the gist of making the um, flower itself. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take my um, the head of the flower and I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm gonna go back to the custom view and we're going to push this back a good bit. We can probably go back even past that leaf. And then I think I'm going to go back to my active camera and I can rotate this. So now it looks like one big um, ball of hydrangea here. Maybe something kind of like this. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna hit space bar. And when I duplicated that, it's still attached to the um, to that stem. All right, pretty cool. So from here, what do I do? So let's go back to our the composition we had originally. Throw that flower into this scene. So. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to find my main flower, which is here. And now I can, with this one selected, I can hold down Option, and this one's also selected. And I can, well, while I'm holding down Option, I can click and drag and drop it on top of that flower. Okay, so now it's replaced. Um, but now the one thing we need to remember is that when you do that, you need to make sure you click on this little button here. Um, otherwise, this is just going to be, it's going to recognize it as a flat layer, right? But we have a nice big 3D flower that's floating all around. And we're not going to see that unless we click on this button. So click on that, and it's going to separate those layers just like that. So now if I rotate it back, we have our full-on 3D, sort of 3D flower. Okay, so let's play this back and see, um, see what we're working with. All right, so you can see some good parallax between that hydrangea back there and uh, how it's moving in 3D space really gives you a really good... I mean, obviously, it's not completely realistic, but it, it adds a different different element for um, this type of stuff versus just this flat layer. You can see the difference between this one versus this flower back here. This one is all super flat. The leaves are the same um, space as the uh, flower, um, and it just doesn't quite give you the same effect that this one does. So um, that's how that's how it was made. So this is a look inside the actual template that you would download from us. Um, but let me show you um, the scene itself. So I'm gonna go into the scene one up here, double click on this. And this is our actual scene, uh, the actual working composition. So again, I wanna go into uh, this one here. And this is the scene that you've seen from the example where these hydrangeas are sort of separated in uh, 3D space, which we just talked about. And I can show you all the various layers. So you have all your hydrangeas there. Um, you have some yellow irises in the background. I don't know, maybe those are tulips or something, I'm not really sure. And those are all, again, built the same way to where you have um, the various pieces of those flowers wiggling and, and animating. After that, I have that uh, blue background. This is basically the paper background that we talked about in the original example, where it's uh, just nice and big and uh, maybe has a motion tile on it um, back down there. We have a few text layers that we have um, animating in. And again, those are just basic, pretty much this, the same thing. It's a, it's a composition um, with some text in it and thrown in 3D space that we've already talked about. And then you have the camera, um, which we have attached to a null object, which is this movement. And if I hit you on the keyboard, you can see the various um, movements here going on. Other than that, there's some grain on top of this to give it uh, sort of a vintage feel, along with uh, a selective color um, effect to create a, a little bit of a... Uh, a different um, color effect all right so that's about it that's how I made the Mother's Day project and moved these flowers in 3d space um, I gave you a little bit of example of how to use a 3d camera hopefully that's something you can apply to future projects and, and not be too scared of the 3d world inside of After Effects so you know two and a half D as they call it um, but if you have any questions add them to the comments let me know um, I hope this helps you out and I look forward to doing some more see ya Bye.